you came across a practice question on reproduction in flowering plants how will you solve it before we actually go over to solving past questions on reproduction in flowering plants it is important for us to understand the basic concepts of these plants which are flowering plants now this must be noted about flowering plants now it must be noted here that the reproductive structure that is found in a flowering plant is simply called a flower this must be noted the reproductive structure that is found in a flowering plant is called a flower i believe you can see the structure of a flower drawn on the board so this is a flower so that is the reproductive structure that is found in a flowering plant so this is where we start from so we already agree that this is a flower now moving further when flowers are studied it falls under a very important branch of biology and it is simply called floriology so this will tell us that the study of flowers is called what floriology this must be noted so this is another point we must take note of now going back to the structure of a flower now it must be noted here that a flower is divided into different parts we have the essential parts of a flower and also we have the non-essential parts of a flower as we progress to explain all of these parts of the flower i will group them into the essential and also the non-essential part of the flower it's not just about cramming and just knowing that this is the essential and also this is not essential it is important for you to be able to locate where they are found in a flower and this is the diagrammatic representation of a flower now first thing first it must be noted here that this large you can see this large brightly colored part of a flower is simply called the petals this must be noted if we actually take a real flower we'll see that this part is large as you can see it's large and also it is brightly colored this is the part of the flower that attracts insects for a process called pollination do you understand so if this set of flower attract insects for a process called pollination this will tell us that flowers can be grouped into you know different parts based on what pollinates them because i believe you know that pollination is the process of the transfer of pollen grain from the anther of a plant to the stigma of that same plant or another plant that is why we have two types of pollination we have cell pollination the answer of a plant to the stigma of that same plant that is self pollination but if the pollen grain moves from the answer of that plant to the stigma of another plant that is called cross pollination i believe you understand it so you can see that it is insects that now pollinate this flower so this will tell you that this flower can be can be insect pollinated we have other flowers that can be wind pollinated so for insect pollinated flower they are called entomophilous flower okay this must be noted for insect pollinated flower they are called entomophilous flowers do you understand whereby we have for wind pollinated flower they are called anemophilous you know flowers this must be noted you know for entomophilus flower they are flowers that are pollinated by insects whereby for anemophilus flower they are flowers that can be pollinated by wind so moving further you can see that we've explained that this is a large brightly colored part of a flower that attracts insects for a process called pollination and it is called the petals this must be noted so moving further now it must be noted here also that flower has two main parts we have the male part of the flower okay we have the male part of the flower and as well as we have the female parts of the flower this must be noted now the question asks me what is the male part of the flower the male part of the flower is this drawn here 
and it is simply called the stamen. This must be noted. You can see that this full structure is called the stamen. Now, you can see at the top of the stamen, at the top of this structure, this is simply called the anter. Do you understand? This is where the male garment stays. This is where the male garment is produced. And what is the main, the male garment is simply called the pollen grain. Do you understand? This is where the male garment is produced. Because I said that the stamen forms the male part of a flower. And inside the stamen, this structure at the, at the top of this stamen is called what? The anter. Whereby there is a structure that supports the anter. This thin line, they call it filament. Do you understand? So, in the male part of a flower called stamen, it has two parts, which is the anther and also the filament. The anther is it produces the male part, the male garment of a flower, which is called the pollen grain, whereby the structure that helps to hold the anther is called the filament. So, this must be noted. Moving further, you can see in this diagram, we have more than one. Uh, what you call it now more than one stamen because this full structure alone is called the stamen we have more than one we have. we have one we have two we have three and four so collection of different stamen give rise to what we call androsium so moving further let's get into you can see that we've explained for the male, male part of a flower it's called the stamen so what's the female part of a flower called is simply called the capel this must be noted simply called what the capel this is the capel the capel has different parts the top of the capel is simply called the stigma what did i say the top of the capel is called the stigma this is where you know the the anther which produces the pollen grain you know during the process of pollination moves towards the stigma the stigma is a is a uh, what you call it, a sticky structure. So for self pollination, you know pollination. I said that is it is transfer of pollen grain from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower or another flower. That is why for pollination we have two types. We have self. We have cross. So for self, you are going from this the anther pollen grain is here transferred to the stigma of the same flower. What type of pollution? Pollination is it? You call it self. But if the pollen grain from this anther from this anther goes to another flower stigma, it is called cross pollination. Do you understand? So moving further, this is the stigma. Uh, another structure here. This is called the style. This is called what the style. Whereby this round structure is called the ovaries. Take note of what I just said. This is called what? The ovaries. Now, it must be noted here that during reproduction, the ovaries develop into fruits. Take note. Inside the ovary, we have these structures. They are called ovules. What are they called? Ovules. Now, the ovules develops into the seed of that flower. Whereby the ovary develops into the fruit. The oval, you can see that there are about six ovules inside this structure. I believe you understand. So all of these basically forms what? The capel, which is the female part of a flower. Now, moving further, it must be noted here that, you know, I said that this is the capel, which is made up of the stigma, the style, the ovaries. Inside the ovaries, we have the oval. So all of them together are collectively called Gynosium. You can see that for the stamen, all of them collectively, the anther, the filament, basically they are called the androsium. So this must be noted. Moving further, you can see this structure here. This is called the nectaries. This is called what? The nectaries. You can see from the word nectaries, it means it produces a substance to which this insect feed on and that substance is called the nectar the nectar is a sugary substance to which the insects feed on so this flower is an insect pollinated flower so i'll call it entomophilus flower because the study of insects is called entomology do you understand from the word anemophilus flower it has to do with a flower that is pollinated by wind 
That is why, if you remember, the instrument used to measure wind speed is called anemometer. You can see the word anemo. Philos has to do with loving. Do you understand? So, entomophilos, insects that love flower. Entomophilos, insects that love flower. Do you understand? So, that is for that. Now, moving further, you can see these structures that actually go down like this. They are regarded to be called the sepas. What are they called? Sepas. Sepas are structures that actually support the, you know, the petas development. You know, they call it blooming. The process whereby these petals opens during development. This, when it opens, it shows that this petals or this flower in general is already matured for the process pollination. So these sepals, basically, they are just supportive structure that helps to protect, you know, flower buds. Do you understand? So that's for petals whereby you can see this one down is called the stem. Do you understand? I believe you know the function of the stem. The stem just helps to support the flower in general and also helps to elevate the flower for the process pollination so that insects can actually identify this flower that is matured so that they can actually pollinate them. Whereby this structure that is thick here is simply called the receptacle. The receptacle, the the receptacle is an enlarged structure that basically, you know, supports the, you know, the capel. Just like it supports the capel. And also connects the stem to the flower. Do you understand? You can see the receptacle support the, connect the stem to what and the overall flower and also support the word capel. Remember, the capel is the female part of a flower. Now, moving further, remember initially when I started this video lesson, I explained that flowers is divided into different parts whereby we have the essential part of the flower and also the non-essential part of the flower. The essential part of the flower are the stamen and capel. Take note. The essential part of a flower are what? The stamen and capel. Whereby the non-essential part of the flower are the petals and also the sepals. So these two are the non-essential part of the flower, whereby these two are the essential part of the flower because they bear the male and the female gametes. Do you understand? So we've come to the end of this video lesson. If you find my video lesson helpful, make sure you click on the subscribe button to my channel and also share my videos with your friends. Thanks for watching.